Alrighty. My sound should be fine. Shouldn't be any problems. Got my chat up. Uh, I am severely out of practice. So let's just jump right in there before I get a chance to get scared about something. Let's go ahead and the comma key. And I'm going to go into the tool menu. And let's go into... I'm going to grab the Nick Z humanoid male that's been modified for TV. And we're just going to go ahead and uh, we'll start with this base body here. So we're going to do a quick speed sculpt. I don't know how speedy I'm going to be, but we'll give it a shot. I'm going to go ahead and import uh, some texture reference here just to kind of get the overall size and shape of what I'm going for. And where's that going to be? That's going to be under streaming. We're going to go turtle power today. We can do maybe a little hyper real work as opposed to doing the stylized stuff. And let's stick with bebop and view extra large. I'm just looking for some body reference here. So we're going to just go ahead and load that in here. Add it to spotlight. And we'll go ahead and make that a little bit uh, smaller there. And I'm going to go ahead and turn off perspective. And already, he's not too bad. I would say just about right. Uh, now, to make this a little bit easier to work with, what I'm going to do, what I usually tend to do, is I'm going to hit, well, Igzy's already chopped it up into pieces for us. So we've got uh, hands and fingers. And actually, we can use that to our advantage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these hands off, geometry modified topology, not geometry, subtool, split hidden. And then let's go ahead and turn these on here. Hey Joey, thanks for showing up. We're going to see if I can't get something done today. It's been a while since I've um, done anything worthwhile, so we'll see how that goes. So we've got the head here. I'm going to go ahead and split that off. And then we've got the body and the feet and stuff I don't care too much about. I'm going to go ahead and hit Control w and we're just going to start meshing this stuff around. So I'm going to hit Shift-Z to bring my reference back, and I might as well go ahead and store a timeline up here. So I'm going to go to Movie, Timeline, Show, and let's go ahead and say, put a marker there. So now I can go ahead and get rid of this. Oh, it's still there, but I can move around and I can hit the arrow keys. So I can snap back. And then uh, let's hit W, control, tap the, no. It's a separate subtool, Mike. Here's, uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, let's go to unmash mesh center, hit X to go out of X symmetry and then turn X back on. And we'll go ahead and just uh, put that head into place here. And then the whole body, we can go through and I'm not going to put the arms down. If we want to do like a uh, Marvelous Designer cloth or something, uh, we're going to want those uh, to be the right size. But what I am going to do is I am going to hold down Control, and we're going to mask lasso, and oops. We can go ahead and uh, tap to um, kind of blur that out and then tap to invert that. And then we'll go ahead and, oops. Yeah, you can tell I'm, uh, I'm a little rusty. Z. And then we'll go ahead and uh, just scale this out. So let's turn on the L sim. And we're going to scale this just a bit because that's about how long I want his arms to be. And then his body needs to be quite a bit wider. Uh, what kind of specs does your computer have? Oh, I got a link for you. You better believe I do. We have, um, let's see, workstation. So actually, this might be a little bit old. I've, I'm on the 2990WX. But um, here's a link to my workstation here. And I might be upgrading at some point. We'll see. Uh, but long story short, it's the 2990WX32 core. Um, I've changed out, I just recently changed out my uh, my liquid cooler crapped out on me. So I changed it out for, um, what are those brands? It's, it's air cooled and it's super whisper quiet. Uh, actually, let me, um, I'll show you, I'll show you. Because I mean, I can't say enough good things about it. It keeps it nice and cool. It's it's just air cooled. It's not liquid cooled, and it is so quiet. Um, orders. I order way too much stuff off of Amazon. This thing. I got the Noctua uh, premium CPU cooler uh, TR TR4 in my system now, and boy, it's great. <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, one of my, I think I've got two Metallica shirts. Uh, one's really old. Uh, are you gonna make any tutorials of creating a character from concept like a high poly model? Because that would be awesome. Uh, yeah, let's let's do that with this. Hey everybody. Um, I am from 
Well, I was born in Salt Lake City, Utah. I lived in Louisville, Kentucky. And, uh, and now I live in Austin, Texas. But I would say mostly I'm, I'm Texas. So let's go ahead and scale these hands way up here. And the reason I'm working on, set on these separately is because eventually I am just going to go through and dynamesh these things. Um, but we could, it's a little bit easier to work on these things uh, a little bit separate. And then we're going to go through here and we're going to uh, go run an inflate on these fingers. And even we're probably going to have to space these things out. Uh, just like we we're going to do for his body. We're going to take his body here and we're just going to go right down the middle, hold down Alt. And we're going to widen him out quite a bit. Actually, let's see if we can't do that independently from his arms here. Uh, I guess we need to do both. So we're going to widen them out a bit in this direction and this direction. And then for his arms here, we'll go ahead and scale those back in so they're a little bit more normal. And then we can go scale down this axis if we just hold down Alt and just draw that. And then, although I guess that's actually about right. All right, so go ahead and put these in here and just run a massive inflate. And we'll go ahead and drop his body down. And go ahead and beef him up in all the right areas. I picked this guy because he has a lot of cool accessories, so it might be kind of fun to kind of go and accessorize out. I probably should have done the base mesh already because this is like the most, uh, it's not my most favorite thing in the world to do. It's kind of boring actually. Let me hit Z. I don't want to move my reference over just a tiny bit. Tap these, and we'll put those into place. Something like this. So now, uh, obviously, we're having a few, little bit of problems here with uh, that head meeting up with the neck. But that's okay because um, we can fix that. And actually, we might just need to scale this head out. So that'll work. So the hands I'm going to leave uh, separate geometry, but the head and the body I can go ahead and dynamesh these together, or I can keep them separate. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and just dynamesh these. We'll dynamesh these at a slightly higher resolution, let's say 240. And same thing with the head. That'll work. And that'll be the start of our horrifying creation. So I'm just going to go through here, and I'm going to use the clay brush. We can use clay build up, and we can go through. And we can start kind of layering on. Uh, how this guy is going to kind of play out. Uh, unf unfortunately or fortunately, uh, usually when I'm making something, I like to go through, the first thing I do is it's, it's a little bit easier to find landmarks on um, little bonier people because you can go through here and you can kind of see a little bit more of the bony landmarks. When it comes to, I don't, I don't, in video games, you know, make a lot of um, softer people. So, this is going to require quite a bit of reference on my part, but uh, we'll see if we can't make something. And it doesn't have to be perfect. A lot of this is just going to be covered up, but I'm just going to go through here. I mean, we're still going to have some surface landmarks. So we're going to go through here. We can kind of dial in a spine. Uh, it's just going to be – let's go ahead and straighten him out a little bit here. He's very – Lean forwardy. There we go. And these feet, again, I don't care too much about the feet, but just to keep us uh, honest when we're doing legs and stuff, let's go ahead and do a smooth stronger. Uh, we'll go ahead and plop that on down. All right, so I think this will work. And on his head here, uh, you can go through and you can just like start sculpting. Um, the snout and stuff like that. If you want to play it, uh, you can start also playing a little bit with more of the volumes. So you can go through here and you can just put like a, a cylinder on there 
and then you can start using primitives and stuff uh, to dial in your shapes. If that's a little bit easier, you can go ahead and like split this off, or you can keep it as a separate polygroup in there. It kind of depends on how you want to work. Um, and if I miss any of these things, I'm sorry. I, I apologize. I'm kind of scrolling through here kind of quick. Um, is that the same you showed during your tutorial of ideation creation? Uh, yeah, you could do uh, primitives for that. That's generally how I how I start. Uh, I'm not a Mormon. I'm not religious at all. But yeah, I mean, as I like to say, they certainly do have a lot of those. Ah. Hey. Um, let's see. Recently, about your ideation, and I'm learning a lot. There's a 2D sketching mode in ZBrush. Yeah, and actually, um, I do. I'm doing. I'm trying to do a lot more 2D drawing and uh, 2D ideation, just in my life in general. Um, so we're trying to we're trying to do that a little bit more. And actually, we can go through here. Let's always remember we do have our reference here. Now, again, I'm not. I don't have to match this perfectly if I don't want to, but it's there. Um, it works. Man, he is low. And here's the thing, too, is I'm looking at this reference, and some of this reference, like, you know, his body type's quite a bit different than this body type, so I may, uh, I can always, I have the option to dial it back, you know, if we're going, like, classic, jeez, is Ninja Turtles 90s? Or is that late 80s? I forget. I remember watching it as a kid. I guess it might have been early 90s. And uh, so I don't know. We might we might have a little bit more fun, and and that's the thing too is, um, we can we don't have to. We can tighten them up a little bit if we need to. We'll play it by ear. And we're gonna go through here. We'll kind of pull this out. So always, uh, and this is why I like ideating in 3D first sometimes, or you know I'll I'll draw in a little bit in 2D, but it's so much easier to go in 3D and just work in the round. Um, like for the head here, like dialing in a head uh, really quickly. If you want to go through here and be like, oh, I want to, I want to do a little creature head sculpt, and you go through here very quickly, and you can start, you know, doing any sort of weird. Uh, it's going to Damien Standard Brush here. Pop out some cheekbones, maybe thin them out a little bit here. So it's it's pretty easy to go through and just kind of put in or dial in any sort of head that you're kind of working on and then you can just go in like perspective three quarter you got you get free perspective you get uh, free um, X you get free symmetry and this is also something traditionally would be a little tough too actually you know what I'm, I'm kind of digging this one we'll, we'll keep this one up and uh, we'll see if that doesn't make a little bit more sense than the severely bloated uh, version we're working with. I'm going to do a quick mirror and weld. Uh, geometry modified topology mirror and weld. I try to turn that on quite a bit. Or use that quite a bit to um, Okay. So we've got his proportions on there a little bit. But let's go ahead and again like I said we don't have to work directly off of that. We can kind of use that as just a guide. And now we can go through here and looking at that 90s reference. Let's keep this as our base. And then we'll just go and um, we'll chisel them up just a tiny bit. So we go through here and we're going to put his, uh, just give him where his pecs are going to go. And that doesn't mean he has to be ripped like Bruce Lee or anything like that. Um, but we can, again, we're just going to put in a few more of the masses here. So, and again, the other cool thing about 3D is you can go through here and you can actually just kind of draw on your model in the round. So it's very, it's still very much drawing. You're just able to do it um, in a kind of a little bit more I will say his proportions are quite a bit different in the 90s cartoon here, so I'm going to lift this up just a tiny bit here. There we go. 
and then we'll go through and then uh, okay so yeah we just draw this on and we can put our serratus right through here and then our obliques will come down and this will be um, the side obliques here and he's not skinny in the cartoon so I'm gonna leave this leave him a little bit barrel chested here uh, we're just again kind of getting rid of us some of that the obesity and then just go in here with our clay brush and then we can pop in where about that clavicle would be and then we'll just work these traps right up into the head and this is starting to bother me here and I'm not probably not going to work too much with primitives here so we can go ahead and just take this one we can merge it down and then drag it and this is what we can start with so he's going to have a pointy nose it's going to come down like so and then I do like the grimace on his 90s face so we're just going to go ahead and dial that in and then his lip is going to go all the way out front here down to his chin Not seeing a whole lot of pictures of him with pictures of him with his glasses off. That's okay. He's anthropomorphized. I'm just gonna dial in a little bit of human features. I mean I do have some some of this reference so we can kind of lean into <laughs> maybe a really creepy um, eyeballs here if we need to. But uh we'll see. And on the movie reference it looks like he does his head does kind of come to a a little bit more of a point. Eh, I don't know. We'll see about that. Uh, just for block-in purposes, I mean, we can certainly use um, fiber mesh. And in fact, the cool thing about fiber mesh is it's actually kind of built in to do mohawks. So he does have a mohawk here. And one thing we can do really quickly is we can uh, store a morph target, and then we can use we can kind of dial in. Whoops, where this. Um, does it go all the way back? Oh, he has like a rat tail too. Man, talk about the coolest guy. So we're going to go through here. We'll put this in and then we're going to uh, control tap to invert this and we'll go ahead and dial in this mohawk. And then we can actually go through and say, okay. So we can go ahead and switch that mohawk out. And then underneath the fiber mesh, we can go over here and we can turn that on and under modifiers oh where is it at morph target guided there we go so now just where my morph target is is where where all this stuff is going to come in i'm going to crank up that coverage and also let's go ahead and lighten this up so i can see it a little bit better i don't need any of this preview and then um, I guess we don't need that many fibers either. That'll work for now. And we'll go ahead and accept it. And then now we have a little bit of fiber mesh here. Now this one, we don't need that morph target anymore. So let's go down here and we'll delete that morph target. So I can kind of just be hanging out there. <laughs> um, what time is it if you're in Texas? It's me. It's 4 a.m. in San Jose. Uh, I start at 6 a.m., so we're two two hours behind. Still early, uh, but this is really kind of the only time that makes sense for me. I'm going to go through here. I'm going to just grab, you know what? Let's do this. Let's go to BI Brush Insert, and we can start with just with a separate ear. So we can start with like an ear shape. I'm going to go in here, and again, I like to split my stuff off so I can Alt-Tap different subtools and then when I when I have them ready I can go through and Dynamesh. Looks like in the original 90s cartoon he has a little bit more rose ears. Uh, he doesn't have because like these these ears are kind of pointy and then he's got kind of the rose ears that kind of flip floppy down so we'll stick with that. Uh, so in that case it might make more sense to not start with an ear but anyway it's gonna be 
way taller at the top of his head, looks like, and we'll alt tap his head and we'll bring this back out. And we might, so we'll go ahead and Dynamesh these. We're gonna Dynamesh these at a slightly higher resolution here. And we can also use maybe Sculptress Pro. Um, go in here to Brush Snake Hook and then turn Sculptress Pro on. So we can kind of go through here and maybe have a little more leeway to kind of go through here and dial in. So I guess these are more like pig ears, not necessarily warthog ears. But that's okay. I don't think anybody's gonna get too mad. And then let's go ahead and um, hold on shift, turn Sculptor's Pro mode off. I like to have it on for very specific purposes. Now, if when I start sculpting through here, I'm gonna wanna make sure that I have back faced turned on. That's gonna be under your brush modifier settings. So when you're sculpting on thin stuff, keep it nice and um, so it doesn't kind of poke through your mesh. And this here, we'll kind of shrink this down. So if this is okay, well, let's dial in the head a little bit first. We'll keep this uh, going here. So looking at his face here, looks like when I was messing around with his head, making him stylized, I kind of made him a little too chiseled over here, so we can fix that. And then he's got this big... So we are running out of resolution pretty quickly on this guy, and that's okay. He's got that big lower lip here. Perfect. And then over here, he's going to have kind of indications of tufts of hair. We can we can build that in. Let's go grab our clay build up, and we'll go through here. And I'm just going to get this block out, and then we're going to start doing accessories because I don't want you guys to sit here and just watch me do the same thing over and over again, which is essentially what sculpting is: is standard brush, clay brush, clay build up, move brush uh, for three hours straight. That's not that's not overly fun. So we'll, we'll, uh, but you know, for the block out, I want to make sure my volumes are at least there. So we got kind of our rib cage go in here. We got kind of, we're not going to give him like six pack abs or anything like that, but just the volumes here. So rib cage, and then his pecs, and then we'll go ahead and dial in his biceps a little bit. It looks like he's got some pretty decent arms in that '90s cartoon. So we'll go ahead and. He's got some indications of musculature. And then clay brush. And then we'll go ahead and just dial in a little brachioradialis. What's that other muscle's name? There's two of them right in here. The ridge muscles, I forget. And then we got the flexors down here. Dial those in, and then the extensors right along the back here. And again, we're just kind of drawing with Damien Standard. And then you go through and you work on the round, and you're constantly changing that camera angle to evaluate, making sure your your forms are wrapping correctly. You got the bicep coming through here. And then you got the brachialis goes through from here all the way on the inside as well. And you got the corachial brachialis somewhere up there in the armpit. I think we can ignore that for now. And then... And that's the one that attaches to that. There's a little little um, little finger that comes off the inside of your scapula on the back. The coracoid process. I think. Don't quote me on any of this. Like I'm, I didn't, I didn't study anatomy right before I woke up. So, and again, I'm a little rusty on that too. I'll we'll go through here again. We're just looking at volumes. So here's our traps. Here's our. Um, so you lean your head down. So right across from my scapula. Yeah, that's right about in here. Should be your C7-ish. You lean your head down, and that's going to be a bony landmark, even for, as we said before, softer people. All right, that'll work. And then down through here, uh, we can kind of maybe dial in some lats, but again, it's this is going to be more surface anatomy. Um, it's got the little Hank Hill butt, and then... Just make sure that these volumes are decent. I don't think we're really going to see his knees, but it's also kind of fun to go through here and be like, okay, so we've got the sartorius. It's going from your aces point right here, and then you can go through anterior superior 
iliac spine, and then we'll go through here and we'll just make sure he has adductors, adductor volumes. <laughs> and then through here, he's going to have his vastus medialis, and then his rectus femoris, and this is actually going to tuck in. So here's his sartorius. Uh, rectus femoris is going to tuck in um, underneath that, and then over here is going to be your TFL, and that's going to be kind of a long uh, tendon. Over here you have a sheath on the side, and then you got a little patella, and then this is going to be your tibia here. And then this is going to be a little softer on the inside because you've got uh, gracilis and your uh, sartorius and a whole bunch of tendons and stuff. And on the outside it's basically just your tibia and your uh, femur right here, a little block. So this is a little bit blockier on the outside. So we can kind of flatten that side out. So that, those are the, again, just the rhythms and the volumes you're looking for. On the back, you've got your hamstrings here. And uh, you got your semi-membranosis, semi-tendinosis. And the one's going to go on the outside. And then your gluteus maximus and your gluteus medius. And looks like I need a little more room, maybe. You got your sacrum. And then you'll have underneath here, you're going to have two uh, sacrospinalis. I forget. Something like that. And kind of go through here. There we go. And uh, yeah, so it's going to be high to low. Uh, your outside calf, your soleus, and your gastronemius is going to be uh, higher on the outside, a little lower on the inside, at least from the front view, like this. And then the ankles are going to be the opposite. It's going to be higher on the inside. Your tibia side and then your fibula side is going to be a little lower. So, body block out, good enough. And then hands we'll work on, head we've got going. Now at this point you can go ahead and like make the head um, stuck to the body. We're gonna we're gonna avoid that for a little bit here. I like to work on the head separately, work on a different resolution than the body. Because right now I can leave the body like this. I can actually go through and probably do another cleanup pass on this guy. But uh, on the head, I'm going to go ahead and start raising this resolution up just to get a little bit more working here. We're going to put a little divider right down here. And I said we were going to get to accessories, but I'm having too much fun doing the block out, so bear with me. Let's go lean this nose forward a little bit. And then again, if, if anybody's just joining us, we're, we're kind of eyeballing this guy right here. I'm going to make him a little bit bigger. I love those shoes, too. Maybe that'll be fun to do. Sorry. Been, uh... uh what's my live classes timing? Um, so for CGMA, I do, uh, it's 8 p.m. my time for, my, for the live QA, which is 8, 7, 6 p.m. Um, California time. What's that, Pacific time? And then the homework is due on Saturday at 2 p.m. my time, so noon uh, Pacific time. And then I just give your feedback, usually usually Saturday about that time, unless I'm out doing something. But the live QAs are always recorded. So let's go ahead and um, broaden that out there. So again, features of the face here. I'm kind of, I'm kind of seeing if there's anything worthwhile. Not really. And his his '90s face is pretty simple. Of course, when you're doing a '90s cartoon drawing, the, you don't want your pencil mileage through the roof. You're not going to put a whole lot of detail in. You're only going to put the detail in that really messages what you need it to. So I don't fault them for that at all. So we're going to do a mix. We're going to do the 90s 
grimace face and body and we're going to add a little bit of hyper realism to it and then go through here and we can kind of make them a little bit a little bit humanoid a little bit pig like a little bit warthog like it's got a pretty thick neck even in the cartoon here a lot of it looks fuzzy too, so we might have to drop in a little bit of that. Okay. <laughs> uh, what's the benefit of using Maya transfer attribute to get a clean topology from Marvelous Claws? It's a low res edge flow needs to follow the folds to have a cleaner bake anyway. Um, The low res mesh flow needs to follow the folds at a cleaner bake. Uh, it's kind of a bit, it's between having a cleaner bake or having um, topology. Like if I was going to do, if it's going to be a simulation and engine, it's a topology. You, you probably don't want to put in the wrinkle details because, um, well, it depends. Uh, kind of depends on if you're doing a pair of pants where you're going to get away with. Mostly you can do like corrected blend shapes and stuff. It also depends on how realistic you want. So like generally speaking for a cleaner bake and you're just going to be deforming the pants, you're not going to be doing dynamic normal maps or anything like that or claw simulations, then yeah, I would say just get a cleaner bake, build in the major primary uh, wrinkle forms that are there. Um, but if you're doing simulation work, then yeah, it's just going to, I would err on the side of don't worry about the topology be, or worry about the topology in the sense that it needs to be all quads and it needs to be f um, nice and organized uh, like when we were doing capes on DCUO it was like it had to everything had to be quadded out for had the havoc havoc to work and then also because it was making the wrinkles on the fly in real time uh, it didn't make a whole lot of sense to bake in a lot of wrinkles either um, but that's why you know, like but if you're just using it for like, oh, I'm, I'm baking a map, baking a pair of pants wrinkles to a low res mesh, then yeah, I would say go ahead. And if you're, especially if you're just doing like 3D printing, then yeah, I would don't err on the side of anything. Just get the detail built in in a way that makes sense. I'm not sure I answered that question. And as far as Maya transfer attributes, are you, I'm just assuming that you're talking about like snapping, not like transferring, um, or, I mean, I guess you can transfer the UVs. I don't really know. I use Zeri Mesher and then I just UV it after the fact. I don't use Marvelous Designer's UVs, although it's, there's nothing wrong with that. I just don't. Of course, I also don't do a lot of cloth, so maybe don't listen to me. Uh, I might say a lot of stupid stuff. I might put you on the wrong path just uh, spouting off. Actually, he's missing a finger. He's got one, two, three. So let's do this. Let's go in here. And I'm going to take this finger right off. Delete hidden. Let's go ahead and run a geometry modified topology close holes. Actually, let's do this. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and say, hmm, this will be interesting. Well, let's do something maybe a little bit fancy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say split hidden. And then on this one, we're going to say close holes again. And then I want to make this all one poly group here. So I'm going to go through here. I'm going to hold down Alt. And we're going to paint right through here, and we're going to let go of Alt. So we have one brand new poly group just sitting right in there. And if we want to clean this up a little bit, we can. We can go in here and we can say, like, split edge, split edge. And then we can say bridge two points here to here. Wait, mirror, mirror, and well. Or maybe not. Let's see. Come on. And then we'll go through here and bridge these two. Really wants to do face operations. I'm going to go into face and say, do nothing. Stop messing around. Do nothing. Just give me point operations. Thank you. Uh, and then you can go through here and you can say, well, first we can go through here and we can say collapse edge. We'll collapse this up. And then we'll go through here and we'll say delete edge. Sorry, this thing is dancing around. There you go, a little bit cleaner. Um, do a quick mirror, mirror and well, just in case you know how I am with that. And then, so now we have a finger sitting out in space. I'm going to go out of solo mode here just to make sure where I am. I hit X symmetry, control shift, alt, delete that. I have a hole in the back of this one. 
So we're going to go B, create insert mesh, new. We're going to go back to our hand geometry here. I'm going to drag this one out on that poly group here. I'm not positive this is going to work, but we're going to give it a shot. I'm going to control drag, control drag again, and we're going to go into geometry, turn out the smooth modifier, and there we go. We can use a little bit of mesh fusion to do some of that work for us. And the reason I'm keeping this um, geometry is because if I go through here and I start dynameshing this, I might run into some problems. So I can keep this relatively even clawed. If I want to clean up this geometry now, let's go ahead and um, let's help zero mesh out just real quick. So we're going to go through here, we're going to even this geometry out a little bit. Just so, actually hold down a shift, let's take, uh, since we're dealing with so few polygons, I can go through here. Actually, that's not terrible geometry. Although, topology purists are probably laughing at that. But you get my point. It's reasonable geometry. But if you do want to, you can always go through here and you can do like a Zeria mesh. Let's do double depth of size down a bit. Zeria mesh. And that'll just kind of maybe re quad this hand a little more evenly. And then now I can space these out a little bit better. So we're going to go in here. And we'll say mask lasso. There we go. And we'll go through here and inflate this up. Oh, that was closed in the back. Sorry about that. And then this finger we don't need anymore. Now you could have done that exact same thing with Dynamesh, just as long as your Dynamesh resolution was high enough, you could just pop that out and move it over and Dynamesh it and then zero mesh it. Um, but I figured I'd do it the hard way for you guys. Um, cool. I'm good. Thanks for showing up. <laughs> and you had, did we have anything like snapping vertex edge or faces between two different objects or subtools? The answer is no. What can we do to snap different objects together so fast and so accurate? Accurate? No. Fast? Yes. Um, if I want to snap any object in the world, all it needs to be is a brush and then you can snap it to anything based on the surface normal really fast. Accurate? Maybe not so much. You can hold down control and you can um, <laughs> snap it to the same size. Uh, but yeah, if I want to like snap this object to this object on that plane face, you can. Uh, is, you know, based on the surface normal, no problem. And it can even be the same size. Yeah, but is it going to be like, I want to snap this edge to that edge. You can do a line uh, you can't, oh, you can't align objects. Do I have that in here? Um, there's a, there's, some people have written, you know what, I probably don't have it in here. Or if I do, I don't remember exactly where it is. I don't, in ZBrush, I don't tend to be like, um, I'm not, I don't do a lot of, what would you call it, uh, modular set building or anything like that that requires like snapping to grid or anything. If I'm snapping to a grid, I'm probably not using ZBrush or at least I'm not doing the initial work in ZBrush. I'll, I'll do the any sort of crazy snapping outside of ZBrush and then I'll just bring it in with known quantities and known bounds and um, just kind of work in ZBrush. It's, I try not to fight ZBrush too much. Now, does that mean that wouldn't it be cool if there was like an easy edge snapping? I think the reason why there's not is because if I had to guess is that ZBrush isn't about, it's, I mean, it's, it, there's some accuracy built in and it's certainly not like out of the realm of possibility that you can be accurate in ZBrush, sure. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's more about creation and anything that takes you out of the creation process that's kind of like, hold on, let me go dial in a bunch of numbers and let me uh, select a bunch of components and, uh, you know, it's, it's even Z modeler is a very much, um, go through here. Let's go ahead and say split mass points. Even Z modeler here. That's like, it's kind of built in where you like inset multiple edge loops and there's options in here, but it's not about me like going over here and then going, uh, over here too much. It's more about just like having that right, um, available to you where you can go through and you can bevel and then you can go like inset here and actually let's do region. So you kind of have some poly modeling options that are available 
uh, that that normally so they I don't know it's a tough one you can do quite a bit uh, snapping isn't really one of those things that's it's strong point for sure or there might be a really elegant solution that I don't know of that I've actually been out of here uh, been out of ZBrush for quite a while <laughs> I could do that maybe I will um, do you get to use Sculptors Pro much at all? Not really. Um, I don't do a whole lot of organic modeling at all. That's why I like when I get on these things, I like to do stylized stuff, and I like to do organic modeling stuff. Is because I don't I don't really get to that often, but it's really fun and fast. I think is um, what I like most about it. I think we've got a pretty decent block out, so we can start doing some accessory work and having a little bit of fun with that. Uh, Z-Sphere rigging improved in 2018 for posing. In pre previous versions, it's buggy. Um, I haven't noticed that it's different, but I also didn't get a whole lot of crashing, so um, I might be wrong. Um, yeah. Oh, and that's another thing, too. If you did want to, like, if you did have a flat surface, uh, it's just surface normal stuff. So if you did have... You know, it'll do it snap to that surface just fine. Or if you needed to snap it to that surface, uh, you could duplicate it off. Or um... <laughs> cool. Uh, SSS texture work in ZBrush. Can these textures transfer to Maya? N the, the SSS work that's in ZBrush is more of a post process. It's like it's not a. It, well, I mean, you, you can bake an SSS map out if you go into Z plugin and you go over here to multi map exporter. I think there is a cavity ambient occlusion. Oh, no, maybe not. I thought there was a, a thickness map in here. Ambient occlusion vector displacement, but there's not. But the SSS um, that you would get in like the render settings is based on screen space. Uh, you can do it object, but it's not baked in your object, so it wouldn't be transferable out. It's just it would be like an image file for on your 2d render so not overly useful to like take into marmoset or anything like that but i mean marmoset and substance uh, is where i would do my thickness map baking anyway uh, how do you use project primitive off do you use project primitive often in your workflow uh not really i'm trying to think this thing too is Project Primitive is great for, like, organic hard surface, and I don't really do a ton of organic hard surface. So, no. <laughs> Talk about what kind is your workflow in creating characters or hard surface stuff? Yeah. So this is my workflow for doing character stuff. And then for blockouts, like, we got we got the um, kind of the head going in here. And we can start refining this head just a little bit here. Just kind of start dialing in um, whatever needs to go on here. And he doesn't have... Oh, I guess he does have tusks. So we need to, that is that is something we do need to figure out here. And he does have some wrinkles up here we can kind of dial in. So now for his tusks here, I'm going to go ahead and widen this out just a bit. And then we're going to go through here. We can create tusks out of a cylinder or even a sphere probably. But let's do it, let's do it a little bit better. Let's go into edit mode here. Let's go ahead and say always switch. Let's drop out into a sphere 3D. Go into edit mode. And uh, you know what? This might actually be better as a cylinder, but we're going to hold down Control Shift. We're going to go into a trim curve. That's going to trim this bottom off. And then now we can go through here. We can just pop this up. And then we can use a deformer. Uh, let's do a bend arc deformer. And we'll kind of bend it this way. And then I wonder if we can. This is pretty dense, but let's go in here to Q Mesh Polygroup All and hold down Shift. And we can just push along those surface normals. Oh yeah, let's get rid of that. Let's go and delete hidden. And on here, we can go to close convex hole. That'll work a little bit better. And now we can Q mesh to kind of just go right along that surface normal there. And then this can be our tusk. Oh, but at the end of the day, probably you want to just, you know, make a make a tusk shape. And we want to put these on our mesh here. So we're going to go to B. Create insert mesh new. You could Z remesh this if you wanted to. And then we'll just go ahead and so accurately plop that in there. And then we'll split mass points. And then we'll go ahead and kind of dial these up and in. So it kind of looks like it follows. The top of that snout quite a bit. 
Although some of this reference here, look how, look how friendly he is in this one. Yeah, I guess that's about right. And then he's kind of doofy in this one. So let's say it's kind of towards the front, kind of wraps around a snoot. And then uh, if we want to, we can mask these bottoms out, control tap to soften that. And then we'll go through here and we'll just kind of good enough. And then we'll dynamesh this at a slightly higher resolution than that. And also it looks like it's not super sharp. It's a little blunted. So we're going to go through here with trim dynamic. We'll take the edge off there a little bit. And then there's some, some lines through here. And the reason why that's important is because now his lips have to compensate for something. There we go. Something actually being in there. And then through here, he's just going to have uh, just some teeth. And we can kind of just follow this around, maybe. There we go. I'm going here with clay brush. And then hard surface uh, workflows, we'll get into that too. So he does have some hard surface accessories, so let's block some of those out. Uh, you can use, um, oh man, you could use Snapshot 3D if you want to, to make uh, like the Gubet, these kind of glasses right here. Uh, but they're simple enough, I think, just box modeling should work. So let's go in here and let's go in and let's grab a cube. This is a custom insert mesh brush, but it's just simple stuff. It's nothing really um, crazy. We'll go ahead and narrow this down and we'll go ahead and um, I do want to do a quick mirror and weld. And I do want to scale these out. So it looks like it goes out to the sides of his head here. And then lives. And if you want to snap to that normal, you can just go ahead and push right down here. So yeah, about right there. And then through here, we're going to have to bevel. So I'm going to go into bevel, edge loop complete. And that's going to get rid of our midline. And I like to have my midline, so I'll go ahead and mirror and weld that back. And then these two edges here need to be... Um, spread out. So I can go and mask these, but I can also go through here and we'll just like insert, hold down Alt, and then we can go through here and we can just slide this edge right along that surface. And actually, we don't even need this one here. There we go. So something like this goes over his nose, and then around here, you can insert a thing, but I'm just going to go ahead and slice this through. Control W, and then again, we can just slide this edge right in here. I think that'll work. So now uh, we need we do need a split right through here. So let's go ahead and do an insert single edge loop like so. And then here we'll go through and we'll say bevel edge loop complete. And then looks like this needs to be slid over. So we'll go ahead and say slide by brush radius. And we'll just slide this here. I think that's about right. And then we'll go ahead and say insert single edge loop on this side. Let's hold down shift. So it'll straighten that out a little bit. I think that'll work. And then we'll say Q mesh single poly. There we go. And then, uh, so this is going to go straight back. It goes under his ears actually. And I think we can just take these ones here just for now. And again, this is a block out. So uh, we can go into transparency mode so we can see it. Hold down, control alt, W. Let's turn dynamesh off because we don't want to accidentally dynamesh this thing. And then also back here, it looks like it kind of scales down a bit. Actually, it looks like it scales down from the top. So we'll scale it up this way. And then we'll go through here. Let's do a um, crease, level of three, smooth set to about four. Let's move these up a bit. And then for his nose, we can just pop those right in. And it looks like this might be a little thick. No big deal. Let's go ahead and mark all these and then just push right along that surface normal there. Although, it might be better just to grab these. And it also looks like when we 
the control W. When we slid that other one, it didn't slide this one. That's no big deal. Uh, we could align these, but I think I'm just going to eyeball it. Then we'll do a crease. So that's one way you could have modeled these. Let's do a crease level of two. Soften those up a bit. Uh, of course, there's a million ways to skin a cat, and we'll run it. We'll run into some of those. I'm actually gonna let's go in here to mask pin, and then we'll something like that. Sorry. All right, all right. And then uh, back through here, there is a uh, dividing line along these. So what we can do is we can say, you know what? Let's do this. Let's go ahead and pop these out into their own sub tool here. Let's go ahead and say split hidden. These extraneous edge loops I don't need. So we're gonna go to insert single edge loop. Let's get rid of these. Let's just run a quick close holes and then do a mirror and weld and then do a uh, delete edge here good enough. And on these, you don't even have to do, I mean, you can do a um, dynamic, but instead of doing that, I'm going to do a Q grid. So we're going to go through here uh, under dynamic. We'll do a smooth subdiv of one and then a Q grid here of a chamfer. And then we'll say and actually, uh, you know, it's back here it looks very, very sharp. So I usually tend to air on the side of soften it just a bit more than I think I need to. Uh, same thing for this one I think would be fine. I'm going here to dynamic, one, Q grid, uh, chamfer, and then that coverage. Yeah, something like that. That'll work. Uh, yes, we are making the pig guy from the movie. Well, I mean, actually, we're. I'm doing. Uh, I'm doing this one. Well, maybe a hybrid. I think this guy's a little bit funner. Um, so we're gonna do some accessories here. And uh, no, I didn't. I've never done any film work. Um, that'd be cool, but it's, you know, I think I'd have to live in California for that. So it looks like he just has like a basic ring here. Luckily, I have a ring right here, so we can just. And then go ahead and split this, and boom, done. Let's go ahead and push this back a little bit here, and we'll go ahead and say, we'll call that done here. And then what other accessories we got? He's got a necklace here. He's got turtle uh, shoulder pads. Let's go ahead and do that necklace. So the necklace he has here looks like it's kind of just claws and beads and some like a little skull hanging off of it so we can do that now in order to get a nice necklace line off of here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take his looks like it kinda just goes right along that crease right there um, so let's do this let's go to sub tool let's take his just so these two are showing I'm gonna say merge visible I'm going to append that merged version here select it and go ahead and just dynamesh those together so now what I'm going to do, hit Control w make it all one polygroup. So I'm going to give a very nice line uh, for our necklace to follow through here. Uh, I can try, let's do this. Let's get his shoulders out of the way here. Delete hidden. Whoa. There we go. Yeah, actually, let's get all this stuff out of the way. He's got a... Uh, What am I looking for here? It's like lasso. So we'll go through here and just get all that stuff out of the way here. Delete hidden. So really what I want to do is just go through here, slice curve. And I want to just put a nice slice right where I want that necklace to go. And I'll do a quick mirror and weld. Isolate this one. Delete hidden. So now I have a nice slice line through here. And if we want to make sure it's very nice, we can go through here. Actually, let's do this. Uh, we can do a zero mesh as well, uh, but at the end of the day, you can go down here to like masking, and then you can mask the border groups, invert that. Actually, let's do this. Let's um, mask our border, grow it a bit, invert that, and then we'll do like a polish by features open circle. 
Now I kind of clean that up a little bit. But like I said before, um, if you want to have even more vertex control over this, it depth size down to zero half. Now let's see remesh this result. So here you can see very, very nice clean line. Um, so now let's talk about that necklace because we now we have our control curve on here. Um, so we need to do, it goes bead claw, bead claw, bead claw. We can do that. I think we have the power. So we're going to go in here to the sphere 3D, go into edit mode, go down here to initialize. We'll make this 8 and 8, something just real simple. Make poly mesh 3D. And then uh, next to this, let's go ahead and say, let's go to cylinder 3D. Let's go down here to initialize. And we're going to do, um, actually, let's do a, should we do a sphere under? I think it's still cap though. Maybe not. Hold on. Let's try a sphere under. Yeah, it's still it's the same difference. Okay, so cylinder 3D here. Let's go ahead and simplify this. So we'll say like 12 and 4. And then uh, this will be our tusk. Let's go in here to make polymesh 3D. And through here, we can just kind of raise this out. Or not our tusk, but our. You could use the same method for a bone. Uh, so here we're going to go through, and then we'll go ahead and let's add a few more insert multiple edge loops. And then we'll say bend arc. And are they just kind of just bent? Yeah, I guess they are. And then we'll do, uh, let's try this group by normals. And then we're going to say zero measure, keep groups, smooth groups down to zero, same. That'll work. And then if I want to get rid of this one, since I like my polarized caps, close, convex hole. I think go through here, we can kind of smooth this result out, or we can just do a quick polish by features. There we go. And to unify this, oops. A little easier to work with. Okay, so we have this. We're going to append our poly mesh cylinder uh, sphere. Let's go to solo mode. So now let's see if this is going to work. So we want these things. Looks like it kind of goes all the way around his neck, actually. So let's flip this around. And this part doesn't really matter because you could always just capture it from an upside down camera angle. But so we'll go through here. So we have this and then we have, come on, then we have this and we just kind of want to repeat these over and over again. So if you want to test this out and if we want this cylinder to go or this sphere to go through here, we can put it that way. So if we go through here, we merge these down, and then we hold down control and drag, and then just keep doing that. That's the pattern we're gonna end up getting. Uh, we're not gonna do a tripart curve brush. If you go through here right now, it's gonna have one, two, three uh, poly groups, so it'll wreak havoc on you. You can hit control W, or you can just turn that option off. We're gonna go ahead and say brush, create insert mesh, new, stroke, curve, and then now you have this on a curve. And then now that we have that, Let's go, and like I said before, if you go down here to brush modifiers, go ahead and turn off try parts if you're not gonna use it, if you wanna play it safe. But I live on the edge. And we'll see if we can't just uh, go through here. So again, we're gonna go to stroke. Uh, this time we're gonna frame our mesh, our open border. And then we can just go ahead and pop these on here. And turn off X symmetry and something like this. So let's go ahead and turn everything else back on. It's about the right size. Again, I always try to over crank it just a little bit, just to get it read a little bit better. Um, let's also try a little bit of depth here. Oops. I think that'll work. Now, uh, yes, all of these teeth are facing the same way, but I can go in and fix that. No problemo. Uh, if you can't tap off, just go in here and say delete curve functions, and then we'll go ahead and say split mass points. We don't need this original head anymore, so we can go ahead and delete. 
Wait a minute. Delete this one. Whew. There we go. And then now, if we go through here, we can say auto groups. And then we can go through here and we can control tap these and we can kind of spin them around. Let's go to unmash mesh center. Now you could make a more complex one uh, that kind of maybe alternates between these. If you ever go into like brush insert <laughs> curves and you look at the vines, you could conceivably go through here. Oops. You could go through here and you could say, give me, um, I don't know if you could though. Because like, would you be able to go because every other one of these would have to be a bead, but then you would want to randomize every other one. That might be a little trickier. But if you wanted to just randomize shapes on a on a curve, uh, you can have you can use the vine methodology to go through here, and you can say four variations starting with multi mesh select 26, which is number 26, and then you want to go through four variations, and then you want to set it on random, so it'll like randomize through those four shapes in that brush, just in case. Good morning, Jefferson. Thanks for showing up. Uh, yes, you totally could have copied that tusk I already made, for sure. Uh, this I wanted to keep uh, kind of like simple primitive, um, just because it's a little bit maybe easier to control uh, the overall density of it. So if I was going to use this tusk, I would z-remesh it to a very low polygon count or decimate it down. Uh, how to control an insert mesh curve elements to align two directions other than the normal directions. Uh, that one I would actually use. Well, let's let's um, let's do that. But let's use. Um, how could we? Okay, I'm, I'm looking at here to see if there's a another thing we can make where we can maybe use that. So this is going to be a little convoluted, but I think it'll give you guys some more options to control uh, how to align your mesh based on any sort of parameters. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and put a bracelet on this guy. Uh, there's a couple different ways we could do that. Of course, the most obvious one is just to go ahead and throw a cylinder on here and call this a bracelet. Uh, if you're super lazy like me, uh, you might also consider duplicating this arm off. Go in here, control shift, slice curve. Um, you can go through here and just slice where you want that bracelet to be. You can also have the option to go in here and you can do uh, hold down control shift and then B radius and then whatever your brush radius is is going to be the bracelet size and then let's go ahead and uh, delete hidden auto groups isolate this one delete hidden zero mesh half depth size down to zero and then you can just simply have zero mesh do the heavy lifting for you uh, this is good for like a little bit more form fitting uh, which may not be the greatest for this bracelet just because it does look like it's a very cylinder bracelet and if you want the exact number of spans uh, maybe don't use this method but I just wanted to show you guys I was available so QMesh probably a good ball go ahead and pull this out and you know what I don't feel like dealing with inside edges so we're just going to close these holes here and we'll go ahead and there we go so that's another way you could go through here and do that now again you can pull along that surface normal here and let's go ahead and scoot this down just a tiny bit So there. Uh, again, it's not a perfect cylinder, but again, it also fits his hand a little bit better. Or his forearm, I should say. Uh, this forearm could probably stand to be a bit beefier now that I'm looking at it. Let's go ahead and err on the side of him having a little bit beefier arms here. And then if you want this to go, you can also use transpose lines. It's been a while since I've use anything in transpose, turn on local symmetry, so we can scale this out. So now, let's say we wanted to um, have a curve brush, but we also want to control the angle of the meshes based on whatever we want. Uh, we can totally do that. One way, well, how I would do it is I would use nano mesh. So right now we have a very nice curve actually going around this object. If you didn't, use the exact same method. Go through, slice a curve, and then go ahead and put uh, your objects along here. For example, 
me just show you how to do this real quick. So if you want to control where your object goes and you want to control the normal angle, but you don't want to have, because right now it's actually pretty destructive, if you think about it, to use um, the curve brushes because every single one of these now is its own separate object. So what if I wanted to swap um, these meshes out with something else? You wouldn't be able to. In this method, you would. So for example, if we, does he have a bandolier? Oh, he does. We could maybe use that. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Let's try this. Um, okay, so we're going to duplicate his body off here. Hold down Control Shift, and we're going to slice right where we want our curve to go. Uh, and it's in this case, uh, actually, shoot, let's just do this. You can slice right where we want that curve to go. Uh, let's go ahead and turn off X symmetry. I think that'll work. We'll go ahead and uh, delete this, and then again, zero mesh half. That size down to zero. Do the heavy lifting for me, and then we'll go through here and we'll say insert single edge loop. And then you know what? Let's just also do a um, polish by features. We'll go through here and we'll say Q mesh poly group all. So now, what if we wanted to put bullets on here, but we want to be able to control uh, the normal angle? So how we can do that is we can go out of edit mode. We're going to go in here. And we're going to grab a plain 3D. Now, this plain 3D, uh, you can go to initialize. You can also go in here to geometry after you make it a poly mesh. Reconstruct all the way down, delete higher. So we're going to hit B, create insert mesh new. Now we have a plane. And now we're going to go up here to stroke curve mode. And now we have a plane on a curve. Uh, one thing I learned recently is if you do this, they will weld together. I'm going to go in here to stroke, and I'm going to make this curve step like 1.25, just to space them out just a bit. So I don't have to worry about that. And now what we can use is use these faces for nano mesh. It's still on a curve, still uh, controllable, but every single object is just going to be an instance on a plane. Uh, it gives me a little bit more leeway. So if I want to put bullets along here, what we can do is we go into subtool, and I want to control them independently. We can go over here to, uh, we'll go ahead and duplicate this one off here. And now I'm going to go through here and we're going to say insert single edge loop right down the middle. And then we'll say poly group poly loop here. And then tap alt, isolate these ones, delete hidden. Let's turn off double stroke, frame my poly group border here. Go grab our brush that we made. And now we have a bunch of nano mesh planes along this. Of course you can make them bigger or smaller. I think this will work fine. And we'll go ahead and tap off. We'll go ahead and say visibility hide point, invert that, and delete hidden. So now we want to put a bullet uh, right through there. So I'm going to steal a bullet. Let's grab PolyMesh 3D here. Let's go to BI Brush Insert Military Curve, and then hit W, and we're just going to grab this one like so. Uh, I don't need that extra piece there. We're going to go ahead and delete hidden. And it looks like these are a little bit stumpier. I believe stumpy bullets is the correct vernacular. The, the right military term. Okay, so you know what? And I can actually, okay, so we don't have to make it stumpier that way because what can end up happening is uh, this detail can deform a little bit. So we're gonna go insert single edge loop and we're just gonna grab these ones here and then control all drag and then we'll just move these things down. And then this one, we'll do the opposite. We'll actually non-uniformly scale this down. There we go. So now uh, we want a bullet. So I'm going to hit B, create insert mesh, new, brush, create, nano mesh brush, go back to where we were playing around with these cubes, or these squares, insert nano mesh, polygroup all, and now we can put bullets along here. So now that it's a nano mesh brush, Anything you can do with a nano mesh, like you can change uh, any of the rotations here. So let's go ahead and say negative 180. You can go through, you can do variances if you want. You can change the height. You can say, if you also, if you want to make them bigger to smaller, you can go to, um, you can actually fill it. So when you go through here and you go through and you change these, it'll um, fill that. But we want to just do fit. And then we can change the overall size. And then what we can do is we can come through here and we can say, and if we do that, we need to flip this back around. Um, you can go through here and you can say maybe scale a single poly uh, mesh center. Um, 
polygon center. So as I scale this up, it's like, oh, I want these to be bigger to smaller. So you can use these for like, uh, recently in CGMA, we we're using this to do like dragon scales where you can control exactly, you know, and also you can go through here and you can rotate these or you can move these things around. It's just gonna follow whatever you have. And the coolest thing is if you ever wanna swap this out with another mesh or you wanna modify these meshes, like um, all you gotta do, and if you wanna turn off the plane placement, you can turn off show placement here. And now you can go through here and it's like, you know what? Let's do our Y offset so that it favors this a little bigger and then these need to be a little bigger and then the Z offset needs to come out just a bit, it looks like. So you have total control over this and you can go into edit mesh and you can do anything you want to to this. So I'm looking through here, it's like, hey, you know what? I actually maybe I want to build in a, um, a piece here. So we can go through here, we'll go to insert single edge loop and we can put in on here, I'm gonna say poly group poly loop. And here I'm gonna hold down control Q mesh, poly group all. I'm gonna pop off a piece of this, like so. It's like, okay, that's what I'm looking for. Go out of edit mesh, and now they've all been updated. You could even swap this out with a completely different mesh just using the same method of stealing the bullet that we did. So that way, control the curve, you can set it, you can align it to anything you want, and then you can make model changes and swaps without having to be like, well, now I want to make a change to the bullet, but I have to do it to every single bullet and redraw my curve and blah, blah, blah. Uh, let's see. Again, sorry if I missed anything. I'm, I, uh, let's see, let's see. How to control this, yeah, line. Try to make a fringe brush, but it didn't drape. Had to adjust one by one. Yeah, that can happen too sometimes. Can you send me the base mesh once this is done? Especially in low poly states, would be super helpful. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, bebop. <laughs> yeah. So what I would do is I would wake up at um, early Saturday morning cartoons because back in the day they didn't have cartoons all day. And that was pretty much the only chance you got. So I uh, wake up before my parents got up and watch Saturday morning cartoons. Sometimes the cartoons are really crappy. Um, a lot of, but, and I watched a lot of Ninja Turtles, a lot of DuckTales. What else do we watch a lot of? X-Men. Still get that song stuck in my head. do 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 What am I looking for here? Nanomesh. I need to drop these bullets down. Um, oh, it's right here. So nano mesh, and we're gonna say offset here. And actually, this size is a little bit weird. So I'm gonna go through here, and they are kind of stumpier. So instead of going through there and changing the model, I can just use this length uh, variant to go through here. So a lot of control through here, uh, as opposed to going through and just relying um, totally on uh, an IMM brush. Uh, anyway. So we're gonna go ahead and sync this in a little bit here. And then now I need to modify this a little bit. So I'm gonna go into edit mesh here and I'm gonna stretch this piece out. So we're gonna hold down control shift, grab a little piece of this, control shift A. Let's go down mesh, mesh center, and we'll kind of scale this, over crank this a little bit here. There we go. Anyway, that's one way you could do that. Uh, we might recreate that bandolier because uh, after doing all that, it follows his body a little too closely, obviously. Um, you know, it's not gonna, although I guess we could, hmm, you could merge these down, turn off array mesh, merge these down, move everything around, and then you could redraw out the bullets, but I'm not gonna worry about that. Let's move on to something else. Okay, so another thing we could use this for is by putting um, these little chunky things around his bracelet. So instead of going through here and going and putting in, and let me guess I can show you what I'm doing, these little chunky things. And it's probably not a bracelet, that's not a very, cool term for this, whatever it is, gauntlet, or um, I don't know, punk rock thing. So instead of going through here and insert, 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 uh, you could do the exact same kind of control, only with this one, you can just use a pre-existing geometry. So we're gonna go in here and we're going to, let's duplicate this off, go into solo mode. Let's go in here and we'll say insert, multiple edges, we'll put one right down the middle here, geometry modified topology, delete hidden, and now we're just going to bevel this edge loop complete, and we're just gonna look for a nice even square on here. And then let's go ahead and say delete hidden. Sorry. 
And then now we need to determine how many we want on here. So it looks like maybe if we do delete a single poly, maybe every other one is where I would want those chunks to go. Oof, and then this one. Okay, so whenever I do that, and it's like, oh, now I need the perfect amount to go around here. Don't bother, I'm gonna hide my mistake underneath his arm. So when in doubt, hide your mistakes where people aren't gonna see them. And in fact, maybe it's not even a mistake because what I could say is, you know what? Yeah, these are gonna go all the way around his arm, but right here, he's gonna need a little extra room for like maybe a clasp or something to keep those two ends together. So really, I'm actually super smart, and I did that on purpose. So we have these squares on here, and now I want to replace these squares with a nano mesh. So let's go ahead and we'll do some simple modeling here. It looks like it's just a basic cylinder. So we'll go cylinder 3D, initialize. Let's say we want to do maybe 12, 4, make poly mesh 3D, control alt, and we'll go ahead and scale this in a bit, drop this down. I like on the bottoms here to have um, Q mesh poly ball, just a little bit, whoop, just a little bit of uh, extra. And then even on the top here, maybe we'll go ahead. If you wanted to, you could like bevel this out. And then if you wanted to really round it out, insert multiple edge loops, interactive elevation, you can go through here and kind of round this out. That's a little bit much, but I do like the idea of maybe a bevel on here, and then maybe one insert mesh like that. Control W, that look about right. Uh, B, create insert mesh new. I guess I could have appended to that other one, uh, create nano mesh brush. And you don't even need to do this. Like you could actually just use the Z modeler brush and then hit M and grab this shape. But I like to control how it gets dragged out. Back to our guy here. And now we're going to go through and we're going to say insert nano mesh polygon ball, like so. And then we can go through here and we'll use our nano mesh powers. Go through here and we'll say fill fit. Does that kind of squash them a little bit? Hmm, they have to be perfect squares for that to work. We'll say proportional, that's fine. And then now we have all the control in the world. Any rotations? No. Uh, so now to make this one look a little bit nicer, we're gonna do a um, crease polygroup, crease level of three, smooth set of a four. I think that'll work just fine. And like I said, we put a little extra room in here because what we need to do now is I need to rethink this. If I'm gonna make, make up stories I need to follow through. So what we're going to do on this one now is we're going to QMesh Polygroup All. We'll pull this back in and then we'll go ahead and say Display Properties Flip. And then right here we can say Bevel Edge Loop Complete. And then we can say maybe not that much. QMesh Single Poly. Blam. So now um, I'm trying to think if there's an easy way I can... Oh here's one. BI brush insert clothing. Not that this is gonna work that well, but in a pinch, you could go through here and just, you know, I mean, hell, that might work. This is gonna work for now, let's say. And uh, let's go ahead and split mass points. And then crease. Let's keep that crease tolerance pretty high. And then now, so this comes through, and then, um, I don't know, I might have to do a little bit more fancy footwork. In fact, it might be better if I just go through here and say, Q mesh this out. Let's do this. Collapse, poly loop. Let's uncrease all, crease, dynamic. And now through here, we can say, okay, so I need, why is my brain going blank? How do belts work? Hold on. When in doubt, look it up. This is how belts work. So <laughs> this is, uh, we're gonna need a little wrap around this side here, and then this thing's gonna be underneath and then it's gonna poke through a hole over here, but this needs to come up. Okay, so that's what I was looking for. So this one, we'll say Q, let's do a 
polygroup polyloop. And then we can say QMesh, or we can do mask polygroup ball, invert that mask, and then we can just pull right up along that surface normal. However, it's going to bring a lot of that with us. So to control that a little bit more, let's go through here, transparency, and we'll say insert single edge loops. We're going to cap it here, and we're going to cap it here. And in fact, let's go ahead and slide this edge loop complete back a little bit. So now we me mask this. We can maybe control that a little bit more. And this we probably need to make a little wider. But we'll get to that in a second. Okay, so now that's vaguely what it should look like-ish. We'll call that close enough for government work for now. We can clean that up later. Uh, this one here, Q-grid, smooth. Oh, yeah. Uh, those are nano mesh. So in order to smooth these ones, huh, I wonder if we can hit dynamic. No. So you would actually have to go and put a smooth, uh, do a to do a smooth right on there. But I'm not going to do that. His elbows are kind of bugging me. And again, I'm going to beef up these arms since he does have quite the beefy arms in that 90s cartoon. And just because I drew on the musculature, that was really more for me for to judge proportions and volumes than it is, like, at the end of the day, probably he's going to look more like this. But at least you know uh, where everything's going to go, right? Um, cool, and at, to change the rotations of the bullets, all you would have to do is go through there on the nanomesh properties and then do whatever rotation you want. Oh, Batman, that was an excellent one. So uh, Batman the Animated Series, is that what it was? Where they had the uh, the film noir kind of look? Oh, that's so good. DuckTales. Um, let's see. <laughs> um... The person asked if you'll be attending Zebra Summit. Uh, no, I'm not even, uh, no, <laughs> I should. I, I, I Just for me to get, kind of depends on what I'm doing at work. So maybe next year. Cool. Uh, after a year and a half of doing stuff at Zebra, so much easier to watch and understand what you do. And that's really a lot of it too, is, you know, once you get comfortable with the stuff, it's just uh, the things start making sense and your problem solving. Like, so my ZBrush for concept and iteration course is really just more about problem solving than anything else. It's, it's not necessarily about how to create anything in particular. It's more about how to break down a problem. And by problem, I just mean what you're trying to create and then coming up with elegant solutions um, for that problem. So... How do you do low polygon textures, like trim textures in ZBrush? Um, that one, I, that just like you would for um, kind of like environment modeling, you can do you can do any textures in ZBrush. Essentially, like if you use, uh, if you wanted it repeating, you can use Nano Tile plugin, uh, or you can just basically it's about like creating an object, making your document square, and then there's a lot of tricks for that. I'm not the best at that unfortunately, but um, yeah, it, it's certainly, certainly doable. All right, let's, uh, let's keep going with this. So now he's going to have a chain around his waist. Uh, now we did, we have been talking a lot about, you know, nice, elegant, non-destructive solutions for some of these things. Let's go in here and do something destructive. So we're going to duplicate this off. I'm going to go in here and we're going to say uh, slice curve. And I'm going to put this chain right through here. Actually, let's get rid of that B radius. So really all I'm looking for is that line here. And then now we can go through here. Is that high enough? There you go. Uh, yeah, now we go to stroke, frame our mesh, uh, brush, insert. There's gotta be a chain in here, right? Please don't make me make a chain. Mm, that's not gonna work. Ah, oh, you guys are gonna make me make a chain, aren't you? Okay. Okay, fine. Ring 3D. Edit. Let's simplify this. Initialize. 
radius coverage we don't care about, but S divides we do, and length divides we do. Something like this. Uh, make polymesh 3D. Control shift. Did that make it? Yeah, okay. Uh, grab this one, mask it. Uh, you can actually use the extender um, as well on this, but we'll keep it. This is fine. This is fine. Uh, yeah, it looks about right. So now we're going to go through, hold down control, and then we'll spin this right around. And then we're going to crash ZBrush. I knew if I was going to have to go in and make a chain, something terrible was going to happen. That's right. So good news is ZBrush saved all that. It's just kind of a pain to go back in and reopen. Brad Smith. I worked with Brad Smith at um, Tiburon. Actually, I went to college with Brad Smith. He graduated, I think, the year before I did at Ringling. His senior thesis was way better than mine. Um, actually, there's our recovered Z tool, but here's our recovered, 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 recovered. Hmm. This actually might be problematic because while I was working on this piece, it only saved my Z tool, which is normally fine. Uh, but when we go and look at our recovered um, file, this is the last saved file we have, which actually isn't that terrible because I want to redo that bandolier anyway, and that was easy enough to do. So not ideal, but yeah, we don't have a saved Z, recovered Z tool that has because we didn't have that Z-Tool selected. Well, thanks for saving my chain, ZBrush. Really useful. That's okay. So we've got this life-ruining chain here. So we're gonna go through here. I'm gonna do an inflate just to kind of overcrank these a little bit here. So now I think if I hold down Control and drag this out, that should work, right? That's a chain. So I'm gonna hit um, B, Create Insert Mesh, um, New, Stroke, curve, and then hmm, let's go to curve step and crank that down a little bit. There we go. So there's a chain. So I never have to do that again. Brush, Alt, select icon, save as. <sighs> ZBrush 2019.1, ZBrushes. Let's throw it right into the IMM. So we have a chain brush now. So let's go back to where we're working. And let's go ahead and tap this one here. And okay, so we're in good shape. So subtool, duplicate this off. And now we're going to hold down Control Shift. And we're going to go into Slice Curve. And then now uh, we're going to put a chain right through hereabouts. Stroke, well, shoot. Let's hit Control W. Because I only want one polygroup to worry about. And if these arms are getting in your way, uh, you can hold down Control Shift and then Control uh, to temporarily go into visibility there. And that way you can kind of maybe put in a little bit better. Actually, you know what? To hell with you. This is just a temporary mesh anyway. Delete hidden. Stroke. Poly groups, brush, chain, chain, <laughs> and then uh, turn off X symmetry. Uh, there we go. And then we'll use a little bit of depth here, it looks like. So we'll go into depth and we'll crank that down. And then that yeah, looks about right. Good enough. So now we're going to go ahead and do a split mass points. Now, on this particular um, area right here. He actually has uh, two large circles are here in the middle. So we can go through here. We'll do a quick auto groups. And then we'll say here and here maybe. Actually it looks like here. Yeah, perfect. Man, I'm so good when I luck out. And we're going to go in here to ring and then turn on X symmetry here. We'll just draw out two of these things. And now these things need to overlap, which kind of scares me a little bit because, um, <clears throat> turn on L-SIM here, 
if we do overlap these and then we okay so they do stay separated a lot of times too if you go through here and you start moving these they'll uh, get sticky uh, but actually these need to be separate anyways but first we need to make sure they're scaled appropriately with else I'm turned on so scale these appropriately let's go ahead and do a deflate so inflate deformation inflate negative value maybe a little thinner I'll push these back actually kind of light these ones need to be t uh, pointed the right right direction and they're kind of not dang so close and then now we have this we'll go ahead and say auto groups um, split hidden and then now we can go through and we can say we're gonna rotate this one back a little bit and then rotate this one forward a little bit just trying to interlink these and you know what let's um, bending some metal here that's okay and then this one here exciting stuff so um, yeah ideally these chain links would be here I thought I was gonna be so smart and it was going to work out perfectly, and it didn't, but that's okay. We can figure that out some other time. You get the idea. So we have all this. We got all that. Um, you know what? We could do a quick, it looks like he has like a bird skull. We can do that. Or we can do a grenade. We can do pants. We can do a jacket. We can do his turtle shell. Um, shoulder pads. We got 30 minutes still. Let's see. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> yes, exactly. Okay, so let's um, let's put on some clothes on this guy. Um, all right, so hold on, Control W, duplicate this off, and then we're gonna go in here to mask lasso. Now we are gonna go into marvelous designer for these pants eventually, but for now, what we're gonna do <clears throat> is we're gonna make these pants like so. And then we're going to hold on control. We're going to go into mask pin. And we're going to say, your pants are going to go hereabouts. Looks like his pants are actually kind of up high. They're like, um, I don't know. And then he's got kind of a divot down the middle, but we can build those in. So we're going to go ahead and hey, say, um, you know what? We can do an edge loop mask border here. Isolate this, delete hidden. Again, if we want to smooth those edges out a little bit, let's go ahead and do that. by features. X symmetry, zero mesh, half, depth size down to zero. Doesn't have to be down to zero, just I like nice even quads. And simple geometry as possible. And then here you can make the decision of do I want to do thickness on my pants? I never do. I always want to do cap and cap. Good enough. Let's turn off double. There we go. So now if we need thickness, Q mesh poly group all, pull these out. And then now we can go in here to crease PG. And then, yeah, it looks like under here, we've got this kind of comes down. And then he's got uh, this kind of flaps over a little bit. We can figure that out. So, and also looks like here, these things kind of flare out a little bit. So one, one thing we can do is we wanted to follow it. We can go insert single edge loop. We can temporarily get rid of these. Control Alt W, go through here, flare these bottoms out. Maybe not that much. And then you can go through here, insert single edge loop or multiple edge loops and just divide this back up. Let's give them one, two. Three. All right, so this is going to be his pants block out. This probably doesn't need to follow. And then the chains here, you can redraw those chains 
anything, you, I mean, you see how easy it is to kind of just put these things on. So any of this stuff, you can always feel free to uh, redraw. It's not rocket science, right? Okay, so now uh, sculpting pants here. It looks like he has some very specific detail on his pants. So I'm going to do, uh, we have crease PG already on. We're going to hit Control D. So as we hit Control D, we can also go up here and we can go into geometry. Uh, oh, go into uncrease all on your crease menu and then Control D. That'll kind of give you a little bit more breathing room around these edges. You can hold down Shift and uh, make those edges even softer if you want to. And then now got our little pair of pants. So now we have subdivision history, so we can go down to like subdivision level three. We can go through and we can start blocking in the volumes of our pants and our pants wrinkles. And again, if we need it to cover, actually keep us um, honest and keep us like maintaining his volumes of his legs if we feel like this is correct. Although his legs in the cartoon is a little bit thinner uh, he skipped, looks like he skipped some leg day. So maybe we can lean into that a little bit, but this is going to be my pants block out. Uh, again, if I'm probably going to use Marvelous Designer for the end end result, but for now, this will be good enough just to kind of go through and just get an idea of what our pants need to be. Always, always looking for that idea first. And then I can go through and clean up as needed. So here we can cut in, probably on both sides if I had to guess. And actually, it might have made more sense. And I, again, I can rebuild this mesh super fast if I need to, but I think we'll be okay. Now on this one, he does have like knee pads on, and they're kind of built in. So I'm gonna kind of I'm going to keep that idea. So we're going to go through here. We're going to mask out where these knee pads are, invert that, and we'll go ahead and pull these out. And again, we can clean this up as we go. Uh, sometimes when you're doing clothing especially, it's a, probably a better idea to start high. Uh, usually I'll tell you like, oh, if you're sculpting, start low and dial it in, and then only go up in resolution when you need to. Clothing is kind of not that way sometimes. Uh, and then on his this leg over here, actually, we have, we're gonna duplicate this off and I'll delete lower, isolate this top part here, delete hidden, control shift, slice curve, and right above this knee, let's go in here and do a B radius slice. Oops. That'll work. Delete hidden, auto groups, Delete hidden, zero mesh, half. And we'll say Q mesh probably group all. And then on the inside, I'm gonna hold down shift and pull that in just a bit. And that'll be good enough for now. Uh, we can simplify this probably, insert single edge loop, get rid of these ones. And then now we can increase PG, increase level of two, smooth to of three. And we'll call that our leg strap. And we can kind of probably pinch that in just a bit. Let's grab that surface normal here, go to Unmash Mesh Center, and then now we can kind of maybe play into that. Hit X to go out of X symmetry. And then, I, like I said before, he does have some very, oh, we can go back and act symmetry for this. Uh, he has like seams right here. So these are actually probably some pretty um, interesting Marvelous Designer pants. He's got seams right down the middle, but it looks like maybe only on one side. And eh, we'll do both sides. And then, yeah, back here, he's got All right. 
Um, cool. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, sorry if I got a little sidetracked there. Cool, cool. Hey there, Maple. Thanks for showing up. Um, let's see. Sculptures, sculptures, sculptures. Uh, yeah, I don't use sculptures a ton, but yeah, if you do need to... Uh, on my YouTube channel, there is a sculptress on my playlist here. And I think, was that a 2018 introduction? Jupiter's 2018, what's new? Yeah, I feel like it is. Yeah, so here's um, automatic tessellation, and then there's like an optimization uh, video in here. Yeah, Sculptures Pro and Performance. So if you guys are want to read up a little bit more on keeping Sculptures Pro snappy, uh, you can check that one out. I'm doing good, Joe. Thanks for showing up. Uh, I closed the pants, but not the straps. Uh, that's just me uh, probably making a possibly bad decision. Um, generally speaking, yeah, you're absolutely right. I would I would close that hole just because I don't like dealing with inside meshes. Uh, and also, if it is a performance issue, not that it's a big deal to have those inside faces, um, but yeah, he is a bit beefier. But you know what? I kind of like that. Uh, but you know what? It's also not like the 90s cartoon. Hmm. You know what? We're going to leave that for now. I think we're okay. Okay, so we got that. Uh, he does have chains around his uh, other wrist. Actually, he doesn't have bracelets on both hands, so we'll go ahead and go out of X symmetry mode. And we'll go ahead and delete that. And then his hands here, these are looking a little bit weak. So we're going to hit Control D on these ones. Let's go ahead and turn on Smooth Modifier. And we'll go through here, and we can start blocking out uh, just at least a little bit. Get them up to, up to par with um, the other parts. Again, just block out mode. So go through here, and looks like he's got pretty wide fingers, so I'm going to kind of lean into that a little bit. And you can also just use, there's a ZBrush hand in there, you're probably going to have to pose it quite a bit. Um, so on the underside here, we'll go through and just indicate where these knuckles should be. So, uh, look at my hand. We have a knuckle right along here, and then we have another knuckle, and then we have another little baby knuckle. Those are the anatomical terms. And then now we can go in here a little bit more informed. When in doubt, just look at yourself. Here, and then here, and then here. And now the thumb's different. It has this big knuckle, and then it has this big knuckle. And that's it. So, go Damien Standard Brush here, and here, and then around the edges here. Let's go ahead and hit Control D, and we can kind of indicate a little skin. We can hold down Alt, and we can kind of go through, and then I build up that nail bed, and then uh, we can let go of Alt, we can kind of dig in. So from the front here, we're going to kind of make sure that nail follows, like so. And then you can go through here and mask, I think, uh, then we'll hold, up, we'll, oops. we'll hold down Alt and we'll kind of pull out the idea of a nail. We're letting go of Alt, and then we're holding down Alt, and we're pushing in, and then we're pulling out, and then we're going back in with our clay brush, and we'll kind of round these out just a bit. And of course, we could use our topology brush to remake those as real nails uh, fairly easily, but we're going to skip that for now. We don't need to make super detailed hands just yet. Now on the knuckle side, so when you have hands, if you're lucky enough to have hands, you do have bigger wrinkles on these knuckles. So these are going to be like primary and secondary wrinkles. And then over here, you have wrinkles, uh, but they're a little thinner. 
So these ones you can build up quite a bit. And then these ones, not real deep wrinkles. Sorry, I keep looking down at my hand. Uh, but a little more bony landmarks. Your phalanges and your tarsals and your metatarsals and all that. Let's go ahead and pull this out a little bit. And on the bottom of the hand, so top of the hand, actually, and you're looking down at your hand like this, um, that makes it look like the fingers are a little longer. And then you go to the bottom of the hand, because this webbing here, ah, going to solo mode. Uh, this webbing here actually kind of comes out a little bit. So now the, hand, the fingers look stumpier on this side. So that's what you're looking for is that right there. Now to kind of sell that hand look. And then um, kind of bend my hand here. Wait, that's yeah, this one. So now we can go through here and we can say like, okay, so this here and this here is lifeline and his all those palm reading things. So something like this. And this can go here. I'll kind of pop this out a little bit. And then go in here with a little clay brush. And um, you know, if he's been hitting the hitting that bench press machine or doing deadlifts, he might have some calluses here. Mine are gone because, well, I'm super lazy. But we can kind of pop those up maybe a little bit here. Also, uh, on the top of the hand is actually pretty flat. So if you look at your hand here, these tops are fairly flat. In fact, we can lean into that a little bit. We can go in here with our H polish. And we can say, you know what? Let's flatten these out. This finger's kind of bugging me. It's got some weird geometry underneath it. And this pinky is a little, I mean, I don't mind a stumpy pinky, but that's a little much. So flat on the top side and then on the underside here, that's contrasted with a little bit of a rounder finger, which we already have. So we don't really need to re-round those out. They're fine. Yay. And then eventually these will be, um... man, we got a lot done for 20 minutes. It's supposed to quick save every 20 minutes and I feel like it didn't quick save for like an hour. All right, I fixed this elbow already. Sorry, boring stuff. How you guys doing? Oh boy, I'm behind. Uh, when I load my ZPR file every time my model is always zoomed out. Uh, it should maintain, when you save a Z project, when you go to File Save, the default is saving a Z project, it should save your camera view. So like, however however this guy's looking right now, if I go to File Save and I open it up again, it should save your camera. Um, you can go through here if you want, if you are saving that information. I believe if you go into Draw, you can go in here and you can actually save cameras in here. So here you can store a camera and you can kind of cycle through them. So that might be something. What is this thing? Oh, it's garbage. But anyway, uh, I'll try and stream Thursday on my channel. We'll go ahead and um, <laughs> say finish this guy out, but we'll get a little bit farther with him. And I might go back through. Yeah, you know what? I'll go back through and we'll redo what needs to be redone. And you know what? Also, hit um, 9 to quick save. Do it whenever you want. Don't wait for ZBrush to do it for you. Okay. Uh, what else we want to do while we're here? Got that. Got his little bird skull we could do. He's got grenades. He's got straps underneath his armpits, which would be fairly easy. Uh, when I'm at, whenever I do just like plain old straps, usually what I'll do is I'll do BTO, topology brush, and then just go through and just draw straps and then pop them off. Um, and go ahead and split mass points. It's just a lot easier to work with uh, this type of geo. Go in here and say insert multiple edge loops. 
and then Control Alt W. Let's lean into this here. And then I go through here, Q mesh poly group all, although let's do a group by normals. There we go. Thin that out a little bit. Uh, and you can double up these straps. You can slice through them if you want to, if you want to do like insert here and then bevel. And you want to round these out. Uh, it just gives you a little, and it's and it's basically just based on super basic geometry. Is all I'm trying to get at, as opposed to going through there and trying to wrangle um, an IMM brush. So if I was to do that bandolier again, I'd probably just use this method and then just fix it. In fact, why talk about it when I can just do it? It's ZBrush. It's fast. It's easy. Just you just go in there. So we're gonna go across here. So instead of doing our slicing method like we did before it crashed, we'll just go through here. And we'll just draw it. So up around here, like so. Connect that one up. And then through here, connect that one up. And then connect the dots. Pee Wee Herman's Playhouse. I remember watching. Now that's that's an older one. That was pre, if I remember correctly, that was pre Saturday morning cartoons. That goes way back when. Um, there we go. Tap that off. Split mass points. You might be oh, that's too thick. No problem. Q mesh probably group ball. Hold down shift. Just shoot it right along that surface. Normal. No big deal. And then now we can go through and we can even this out a little bit. So one thing I will do is I'll do a polish by features open circle. That was a bit much. That's okay. Because now we have a nice, um, much more rounded, because we didn't need like a form fitting uh, bandolier. That's what these things are called, right? It needs to be just kind of around his body, but not like conforming to his body like it's made out of cotton or something. Much better. Okay, so uh, now that we have that, we don't even need to use, we can use that other technique, um, or we can just go through here, we can say duplicate this off, and then we'll isolate just that purple polygroup here, delete hidden, insert multiple edge loops, polygroup, poly loop, um, and then we can go ahead and frame that mesh. Of course now, yeah, let's do it. Sorry, retreating. But you know what? Repetition is key to learning. So we're gonna go here, and we're gonna say polymesh 3D, BI brush insert military curve, W, bullet, auto groups, isolate just the bullet. Oops, looks like it's got multiple parts. That's okay. Judge modified topology, delete hidden. We wanna make this squashier, so we're gonna say insert single edge loop, get rid of these so we can make it squashier without losing this detail here. Although now that I look at this, I feel like this needs to be over cranked just a bit. Just to get it to show up a little bit better. Oh, and it looks like there's a little piece inside here. Say double. Really? Let's do this. You know what? We don't need you being weird. All right. Delete all that stuff. Close convex hole. Isolate this. Inset polygroup all region. One, two, Q mesh. Hold down shift. There we go. All right. So control W. Here's our new bullet. We want to, and in fact, I want to, okay, we're going to fix this thing. Let's go to hide point, invert that. Let's go to close. I like, I like close meshes more than anything. Uh, sometimes it's not going to let you just because um, it thinks there's geometry there. Let's just do this. And then I'm going to say Q mesh polygroup ball. I'm going to group by normals again. I'm going to pop this out just a bit. 
And then this one we want to shrink down, if I remember correctly. Yeah. All right, merge these down. Control W. And this is also useful if you want to put a different, like a brass texture on these pieces. You can do that, no problem. All right, so this is our new insert mesh brush. We're not doing a curved brush. Brush, create insert, new, and then go back. Oh wait, we need to do another curve. Here, plane, make poly mesh 3D, geometry, reconstruct. Brush, create insert mesh, new, stroke, curve, step, 1.15 or 1.12 maybe. Is that enough? Yeah. Stroke, frame, bullets. Is this how many bullets I want? Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. A little bigger. That'll work. Stroke, delete. Hide point, invert that, delete hidden, brush, bullet, create, brush create, and a mesh. Polygroup all. Go down here to our nano mesh properties, and we're going to say proportional is fine. 180. Let's change that length a bit. Size. And we're going to move it up a little bit. So X offset. No, Y offset. Actually, it looks like this bandolier is a little thinner. I'll tap this one. Key mesh polygroup all. Thin that out just a bit. Maybe thin it out even more. On the nano mesh bullets, let's go to Z offset, push those out a little bit, and then uh, go into edit mesh here. And this is where we are going to put in here our insert single edge loop. About here. It's pretty big actually. And then poly group, poly loop. Control drag out. Actually, control drag out and then tap Alt. That's about right. Okay, quick save. Whew. Um, cool, cool, cool. What time is it? All right, it's about that time. So thanks everybody. Uh, see if I have any last-minute things here. And the brushes that can help with transferring detail to retopo mesh when doing projecting. My mesh sometimes tend to explode. Yeah, that is the. Um, Z project brush. So for example, BTO, let's tap. This one. Okay, so uh, for example, if we turn everything off and we do BTO and we just do some topology here. And then this one I'm gonna make draw size of one and then we're going to say split mass points. Now, uh, you can go uh, duplicate, project, or not duplicate, divide, project all, subdivide, project all, subdivide, project all. And then now you are getting that detail projected onto arbitrary geometry. However, you can also go to BZP, that's your Z project brush, turn off RGB, BZP. Uh, and then it's set at 50 by default, but you can use this like if you have. Um, you know, anything that isn't quite conforming to your mesh. It's like, ah, oh, it's not quite getting everything. Uh, use the project brush. It is camera based, so make sure BZP. Uh, you can project down to your object and then hold down Alt and project up. So kind of go look straight down at your object and then just use this brush to do any kind of cleanup work. 
There we go. Something like that. Yeah, I'll try to get on Discord a little more often. <laughs> uh, like Predrag says, uh, using the Pulse by feature with the open circle is like using relax keep borders. So basically, and also, um, just to expand on that, that's correct. Uh, polish by features closed circle maintains your volumes. So it, it'll polish stuff, but it'll still maintain your volumes. If you really just want to polish the hell out of something, open circle will just get rid of your volumes, but make it super polished. So that's the difference between open and closed. Uh, tools and different export values, expand up subtooled layers, another session, you're running session. Yeah, I have had that a bug where um, just recently bringing in something from Marvelous Designer, uh, I'll move something down, I'll duplicate it off, and it'll jump down. I'm not sure what that is. I wish I had an answer for that. I use a gizmo schema model. Won't that be the default scene? Um, yeah, if you save your scene, it should be. Yeah, and really, if, you, if you're working at a scene value, like if you're working a Marvelous Designer, import their avatar. It's going to really change your... If you want more information on this, actually, there's better. Actually, here, I do you one better. I think you can just access it from here. So Z plugin, there is a uh, scale master. Click this little scale master at the top here and go to usage video, and then that'll give you all sorts of information on... Um, zebra scale and how it works so anyway thanks everybody um i'm gonna head out but we got some work done we lost some work we laughed we cried but i think all in all um it's a pretty decent progress we'll, we'll continue this on thursday how about that so uh see everybody later